In this video we're going to talk about the frequency analysis in RCB. We're going to have a look at the settings and how to look at the frequency analysis results, so the animation and the report. We'll learn what parasitic mode shapes are and how to deal with them and basically we'll look at the frequency analysis in preparation for spectral analysis and wind analysis for wind sensitive structures. But going to RCB, we're going to run a frequency analysis on the model that we've been working on in the previous videos. So for those that are joining us just for this video, uh, looking at the model in 3D, it's a medium rise residential building with approximately 14 stories above ground. And um, we have, if we switch on the wall fixity, we have a lift shaft that is going to be cast in situ concrete. All of the other walls are going to be made of precast panels, hence these are discontinuities that have been modeled. So to run a frequency analysis, we first have to double check the settings. So even before we run the analysis itself. So if we go to settings, models and solvers, under the frequency analysis settings, we need to have this save mass and stiffness for frequency analysis switched on. So the prerequisite for running a frequency analysis, which is done under solve frequency, is to, is to have a linear static or second order linear static analysis complete. When we run uh, the linear static analysis, we generate the, um, the stiffness and mass matrix. And in order to run a frequency analysis, we need to have that stiffness and mass matrix saved. So um, if we go back to settings, model and solver settings, if this is switched off, it will be discarded at the end of the run of the linear static analysis, which we don't want. So we have to have this switched on. Um, other things that we, that we set are the number of mode shapes. So it's important, or well, at this stage, we don't know the number of mode shapes that we'll need, uh, basically to get a mass participation of above sort of 80% approximately for the um, for the spectral analysis and period shift this will have we'll have a look at what this is doing when we see some parasitic mode shapes precise column mass means that the uh, the part of the column that is sitting inside the slab above is not calculated and uh, basically any walls below the ground level that we've defined will be restrained. And we have to specify a combination for gravity load, in this case the service G plus 0.3 Q case. So we'll just hit cancel. The frequency analysis has been already run in this case, but just quickly going over the steps, uh, we ran the linear static analysis, then we ran the frequency analysis. If we then go to the results, uh, we can start having a look at the um, the mode shapes, so the animation. So we go to results, general mode shapes, and we can start having a look in 3D f of our results. So we hit the mode shape number one, the first one that was that was calculated, and we hit animate. So straight away we can see that this is what is referred to as a parasitic mode shape. So just uh, basically an individual element vibrating by itself. So a non-global uh, a non-global movement of the entire structure, just a, a local element. If we just hit escape to stop that animation. And we see we've got a bunch of them with um, basically very low, very low natural frequency, uh, and we're not sure exactly which one is going to be our um, basically the, the the global ones, the ones that represent uh, vibration of the entire structure. So we'll hit close. How we determine that is we have to go into the report, the frequency report. So if we go to reports, frequencies, and we hit frequencies only we see that for the uh, calculated number of periods 6 times 3, 18, we have uh, all of these values that have been calculated for frequencies, giving us a total mass participation of about 62% in the X and the Y. So for the spectral analysis, this is not good enough. And uh, straight away, we can see that we have an extremely low mass participation for that first um, natural frequency that we saw. So we saw that it was just the wall vibrating and not the entire structure. We have to go all the way down to, uh, for example, 
natural frequency number seven, sorry, number eight, to get one that has a larger um, a larger mass participation for the entire structure itself. And similarly, we so to get so that's in the x direction, and then we have to go down all the way to number sixteen to get one predominantly in the y direction. So let's go back to the animation again. And let's have a look at one of these global results. So we will look at the top and it was uh, number eight. That was of the entire structure. Okay, so we see the entire building is basically moving, meaning that this is a global uh, natural frequency, not like a not a localized parasitic one. So that's basically we've got some coupled twisting movement, but predominantly, as shown in the report, uh, in the x direction. And then it was number sixteen that was um, in the y. So again, if we animate it we see that again coupled movement in the X2 so there's a bit of twisting and most likely due to this eccentric core these panels that we've got modeled but it's dominant movement in the in the Y direction so hit escape and we'll close that so going back to the report itself and we'll talk about the values of interest So we need to run the frequency analysis by itself for two reasons. Um, if we're running a spectral analysis, the first one is we need to know that the number of mode shapes that we've set is sufficient to capture, uh, basically to give us sort of a higher mass participation of about 90% and above. Here we see that we are quite low, so therefore we will have to one, either increase the number of mode shapes to get rid of some of these parasitic mode shapes. The other reason why we run the frequency analysis by itself is that we need to determine the natural frequencies in the X and the Y direction for the wind analysis of wind sensitive structures. So we can see straight away that our first natural frequency basically the entire structure is below 1 Hertz so we're at about 0.25, meaning the structure is wind sensitive, meaning that we will have to do the advanced calculations for a long wind and crosswind to section 6. We do To do those calculations we need these values in the, um, in the x and in the y direction. So that will be discussed in more detail in the wind video, but the values that we'd be after are, it, I would probably use this number 10 value because this is larger than the number 8 value, meaning that the dominant uh, the dominant natural frequency the dominant mode of vibration in the x direction is at 0.29 hertz and the dominant one in the y is in is at 0.363 hertz and this will be discussed in more detail on how we use these in the wind video so for the spectral one we needed to know that the mass participation was above sort of we wanted to get it above 90% which in this case it is not why we run the frequency analysis separately before we do the spectral analysis is that if we were to run a spectral analysis, so if we go solve spectral, it automatically goes through all of these steps, and one of them being a 3D frequency analysis with the number of mode shapes we set in the settings. If the number of mode shapes is not enough, then the results of our spectral analysis will be incomplete. So we have to have um, we need to know the number of mode shapes we've set is correct. So going back to our frequency results, the next step is basically to get rid of some of these parasitic mode shapes. So how we get rid of parasitic mode shapes? Well there's two ways, well, the first one being that we, um, we fix locally the part of the model that is causing the issues, and the second one is to use period shift so in this in this video we'll just use the period shift tool uh, but I'll mention how we fix the model locally 
So going to the slab itself in the working area and colouring the slab by thickness, we saw that it was this back face of the ventilation shaft from the car park that was just vibrating by itself. And if we zoom in, we can see why it was doing that. So essentially, this wall doesn't, does not have any connection to the slab, so this is all modelled as a void. Um, and the reason why it was modeled like this, it was going to be a precast panel. Uh, initially, there was the way it's modeled right now, which you know may or may not be indicative of how it will be in reality. It is currently not connected to the um, basically to the this slab edge here or these other panels. So essentially, this this precast uh, wall is spanning from the the lower, let's say, the ground level where it starts, all the way up to level 14. So completely unsupported along its edges for that length. So it's unsurprising that basically this was vibrating by itself. So one way to get rid of that parasitic mode shape would be just to model this wall. Uh, for basically starting stopping at these edges or to model a thin slab strip in this zone basically to stop the vibration of this individual structural element. So that would be one way of doing it. The other way of doing it would be to try to use period, a combination of period shift and increasing the number of mode shapes. So what is period shift? If we go back to the settings Period shift basically tells the program to ignore any values um, basically ab above a certain period. So if we go back to our report, we see that we don't start getting any values with some significant um, basically mass participation until about 5.3 seconds. So what we would do, we would basically shift out all of the, the values above by inputting into this, uh, into this input 5.4 seconds. So basically the program only starts counting values uh, sort of below this 5.4 seconds. And then the other thing that we could do to try to get the mass participation up is to basically increase the number of mode shapes. So if uh, the maximum the software allows is uh, 20 by 3, so that will give us 60. So I'll just open up the file now that had this run and we'll have a look at some of the results. So with the model um, meshed, analyzed, and frequency analysis run again, uh, we won't look at the animations because we know what they are. They, they will be the same as before. We'll jump straight into the report. So we go to reports, frequencies, frequencies only. So we see that the period shift has chopped off the top parasitic values that were in the previous report and started counting from um, basically 5.4 seconds downwards. And if we go all the way down, we see that the rest of the values that are calculated with this increase in the number of periods, they're all basically parasitic as well. So in the X, we're close to the 90% mass participation, but in the Y direction, we still haven't achieved the required 90%. So for the case of a spectral analysis, if we were going to be doing a spectral analysis, we would have to start looking at some of these animations, seeing what the parasitic elements were. So for example, we knew that this wall was vibrating by itself. We could stitch this up with uh, basically, we could fix this parasitic mode shape by adjusting the wall's edges or putting in a slab zone. So that could get rid of some of those areas, those errors. And we would basically have to repeat that process for the other parasitic mode shapes, um, we would have to try to get this model running a bit smoother so that we get the mass participation a bit higher. So yes, yeah, so still a bit of work to do if we were going to do a spectral analysis. If we were going to be doing a wind analysis to section 6 of the code, we've got all the information that we need. So it, it might change as we, as we start modifying our structure, getting rid of parasitic mode shapes. But the values that we need for the uh, section 6 advanced wind analysis are this um, first natural frequency in the x direction of 0.29 hertz. So again, I'm using this, this 0.29 value as opposed to 0.246 because this mass participation is higher, meaning that this is sort of the, the first dominant one in the x direction. 
and I'm going to use the 0.363 uh, for the y because this is the first dominant one in the y direction. Now the uh, the spectral analysis and uh, the wind analysis for wind sensitive structures will be covered in separate videos.